You know, there are many things that you may not understand. But then when they begin to happen to you, then you say, okay, I now remember like some of the things, just like somebody said that, when you grow up, you understand why your father sit down outside in the evening and shake one of his legs. Now you may not understand why your dad sit down in the evening. Hallelujah. But when you grow up and you face responsibility, like the teaching of little beginning, it will apply to a lot of people that are already starting life and are out in life. And then this is a, a mentorship attempt to help us to be able to survive in our days of little beginning. And I believe the message will come handy. I know that many of us have listened and then we have been blessed, but it will be more beneficial if we listen again and again. Hallelujah. The word pastor means to be mentor, to be a mentor, to be a coach. Any church you attend, hallelujah, the pastor of that church becomes your mentor in a general sense. Because to pastor means to coach, to teach, hallelujah, to help, to guide. That is what it means to pastor. It means to shepherd. So any church you go to, the pastor there, you must see him as your mentor. Hallelujah. Especially in the general sense. Now, in that same general sense, there are people that are closer to him. And then the mentorship goes to another level. If everything your pastor is saying is pleasing you, he is not mentoring you. If every Sunday you go and then what the pastor says makes you happy, every Sunday, he is not mentoring you. A sign that you are being mentored is correction, discipline, instruction. He should say something that pricks you. If, if your pastor doesn't say anything that pricks you, like, ah, this is like he's talking to me, like, he's still talking to me, or like, he's talking to me, or why is he talking like that? This is hurting you. Then that is when he's mentoring you. Come on, are we together? Yes, if everything your pastor, I'm talking about, now many of us, some of us that worship here, and then it's a partner service, of course. If your pastor's teaching, does not correct you and makes you angry. He's not mentoring. So open your mind to receive the ministry of your pastor. Because your pastor is not just somebody wearing tie and collar. He's a mentor, a coach. Are we together? Now, for those that have extra mentorship with their pastors, and let me tell you one of the signs to know that a, your pastor or your mentor has accepted you as a mentee. It is not just because, okay, you're my mentor, you're my son, you're my father, you're my son. No, that is not a sign he has accepted you. A sign that your father or your mentor has accepted you as a mentee. This is one of the fail-proof tests. Is the ability, the day he corrects you, shout at you, rebuke you, and say, get out of my office. Oh, straight rebuke like that. Until that day, never believe he's mentoring you. That day reveals to you that now is, I'm truly a son. I learned it from Bishop Hubert Angel. He said one day Pastor Chris called him, shouted at him. Because he gave him, so he corrected him. I said, where's your wife? Give her the phone. Correct the two of them. Hubert Angel said when they dropped the phone from Pastor Chris, all of them shouted, jubilating. Because the fact that he could correct them means he has accepted them. You know, you will not correct somebody when you are afraid he will leave. Are you understanding me? You, you, know, you know, sister, if, what if I said he will leave? No. But when you know that I can correct this one and he will stay, the day somebody corrects you to your face, that means he has accepted you as a son. The ability to say, do the Bible say, thy rod and thy staff, they what? Your rod and what? Staff. Rod is for correction. Rod is, the staff is for direction. Until the day somebody corrects you, and say, sit down. Or what you did is wrong. Look into your face. Then you have a mentor. If everything your mentor is doing with you is like, okay, sit down. The Bible says, and then you go, uh, you come back every time. That is not mentorship. Correction. And then some people go another extent to prove you have a father. If he can give you certain instructions in some part of your life. Like, don't do this one. Go here. Come back. As a matter of fact, instruct you and say, do this for me. We are six in my family. And that in the six children, there are a few people that my father said, buy this thing for me. When we grow up, as I grew up and I began to understand more, I understand why my father makes these people to do this. I remember, I understand that the rest of the people, 
He doesn't see them as somebody he can boldly ask them for something. Maybe if they ask him for something, they will say disturbing them. There are people that, hey, if your father has ever asked to do something for me, that is another level altogether. How many of you have people lived in your compound apart from the children of your mother? Like, apart from your the mother, other cousins or something like that. Have you ever experienced something like that? You discover that the way your mother corrects you, she can slap you and say anything fool, not like direct. But when you are not her child, and then you offend her, if I talk now, they will say I'm wicked. So she will now call a meeting. I want to talk to you about this. Yes. But a sign, if it is her child, she will not even think about it. You are wrong. It's instant slap. It, because this is my child. That is a sign. That, but if it's not her child, she will not be able to look at the... She if I correct now, but if it's her child, she knows that nobody will say, and you are being wicked to your child. So correction and reproof is a proof of sonship. Are we together? So the teachers are coming to arm us, to coach us. Little beginning mistakes not to make. Things not to do. And I believe as we hear this preaching, I thank God for the testimony, but most of us will appreciate the teachings more later in life. Hallelujah. Now today is the last day where we'll be talking about the little beginning. And then on Sunday, we are starting a new topic for the month of March. Hallelujah. And then we want to close by a topic, don't give up. In your days of little beginning. Don't give up on life. Don't give up on your vision. Don't give up of what the Lord has told you. Hallelujah. You might have dreamt and seen visions in your life. And then now your age is ticking. And then you discover that life is not materializing. I don't want you to give up. Hallelujah. You might have been discouraged in your days of little beginning. And things are not working the way you want them to be. I want to encourage you not to give up. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 6 to 9. And then Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Put Habakkuk chapter 3. Okay. Who is? Okay. Let's go. I think you can be fast. Isaiah 56 to 9 and then Habakkuk 3 17 to 19. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's go. And the priest said unto him. No. Isaiah chapter 50. Verse 6 to 9. Hallelujah. The system is pretty freeze, freezing, I believe. I gave my bag to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. Don't give up. Habakkuk 3 verse 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Hallelujah. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no hurt in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like his feet. He shall make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer of my string instrument. Hallelujah. Alright, I want us to read again together. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19 together. Hallelujah. Are we there? Let's read together. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no heart in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The God is my strength and he will make my feet like his feet. And he will make me to walk upon high places. Hallelujah. To the chief singer of my string instrument. Hallelujah. Don't give up in your days of little beginning. That is my topic this evening as we close. Hallelujah. You 
you are being encouraged and dead to be strength. Even though the fig tree are all destroyed and there is neither blossom left, no fruit, though the olive crops all fail and the fields like barren, even if the flocks die in the field and the cattle bands are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be happy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my the Lord God is my strength. He will give me the speed of a deer and bring me safely over the mountains. Hallelujah. If you have gotten a word from the Lord or a vision, don't give up about it. Hallelujah. Anytime you give up on things, you develop a character of quitting. Anytime you attempt something and then it doesn't work, you quit. You start something, it doesn't work, you quit. You are building a character of a quitter. And then when you have that character, you may not achieve anything serious in life. Hallelujah. Anything worthwhile in life takes a process and has a story. Giving up is not one of the stories that makes people to succeed. Trying again and again and again and again and again. Never give you up, especially if the Lord has spoken to you. Hallelujah. Especially if you know you are in God's will. Especially if you know you are in God's purpose. There are seven things based on my research that I've discovered that all champions know. The first is that every worthwhile vision is attached to time. It takes time to achieve anything worthwhile. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. The Bible says the vision is yet for an appointed time. Though it tarry, wait for, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall what? Speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Though it tarry, wait for it. Hallelujah. How many of us know how old is Amazon or Google or Facebook? Hallelujah. You know how old all those companies are? How many of you have ever read the biographies of Facebook? Have you read the biography of Facebook? Okay, please. I want to give you some, uh, an assignment, some biographies to read. Right, turn your Bible. Read the biography of Google, the biography of Facebook, the biography of Microsoft Word, the biography of Redeemed Christian Church of God, the biography of Living Faith, the biography of Bill Gates, the biography of who again, who is rich that people admire, Dan Gote. Read these biographies when you go home. I will together. Who is it? Read the biography of Sinach. Read the biography of Dr. Paul Eneche. Read biographies. Like, when you go home, read 10 biographies of big things today. And then ask yourself, how old are they? Come on, are we together? Everything big you see today was not big. The only thing that kept them going was never giving up. I read the biography of Kentucky KFC. You know about K KFC, right? He has reached applications for up to 56, is it 56 times? I can't remember the number, but it was a countless number of times. Until he was finally accepted. Was it Albert Einstein that discovered that like, he tried it how many times? 99 times. I don't know whether that's uh, philosophy or that is really true. But if he tried 99 times, then they asked him, why didn't you give up? He said he discovered 99 ways of not making it not work. So, Every champion you see today have discovered and have a mindset that everything worthwhile takes time to build. And life is like a drama. Nobody has the stage forever. When you give up, somebody replace you. Somebody take your space. Somebody take your scope. Somebody take what you should have achieved. When God said, be a singer and you give up on singing, God will raise somebody to sing the songs you are supposed to sing. When God said, be a pastor and you refuse to pastor, God will raise somebody to pastor the people you refuse to pastor. When God says, start a business and you start and give up, God will raise somebody that will start that business and succeed. Hallelujah. So when you have a goal, you have a plan and you take the steps, expecting a result, Never give up on the way so long God has spoken to you. Hallelujah. Number two, every champion knows that physical and spiritual wall of limitations are not real, especially believers. Anything limited.
limiting you is not always a limitation. All of them are put on your way to develop your character. Challenges are character builders. Hallelujah. They are not meant to resist you. I remember those days when I started that in ministry. I was asking God, Lord, you want the souls to be saved in the crusade ground. And then we are here to go on the crusade ground. Why must we fast? Why must we pray? Why must we... I don't even stand me now. If I've ever gone to a crusade, discover that you have to fast. Everybody going on crusade, they will do marathon fasting. Why must you fast if you want to die because you want to go and win a soul that God likes? Why must you pray and do vigil? Some people even on the crusade ground will still be doing vigil. Why? God, why? You like them with you too. Okay, we are here. So you expect to carry the mic and preach and then things happen. Why is it not like that? You have to pray and fast so that you develop character. So that when you win a soul, you are more serious. When somebody is healed, the Bible says, you bid land and sea to make one convert. And then when you make a convert, you make them two times the candidate of hell. You know that scripture? Let me get it for you. You go and bid frosty God. Hallelujah. Matthew 23 verse 15. So challenges come as hindrances to make us better. To help us develop character. Matthew 23 verse 15. This was the answer that God gave me. Why we have to fast. Why we have to walk. Why we have to labor. So that the souls will be won. Matthew 23 verse 15. Hallelujah. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees. Hallelujah. That is pastors, missionaries of that time. Hypocrite. For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. A proselyte is a convert. That is King James. Hallelujah. And when the person is made a proselyte, you make him what? Twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. That means before he was born again, he was going to hell. But now that he's born again, you make him two times a candidate of hell. But now when you suffer to win a soul, you will be more serious in keeping them. Are we together? So challenges come to make you strong to survive success. I have read this, I have, I've done a study about millionaires, and then I've discovered that real millionaires hardly show their millionaires. It is new millionaires that show in their clothes, in their car, and I was real wealthy people. You don't see it in their clothes. You don't see them in their food. You don't see it in their dressing. It is young people that are making new, maybe 5 million, 6 million, 10 million, that are show. The more you grow, those guys, they have a level of understanding that challenges have revealed to them and they have a character to life. So challenges that you face on the way in your days of little beginning are not aimed at destroying you. Remember when I thought about the reason of mockery? People mock you not to destroy you, but they mock you to make you stronger. Hallelujah. Challenges don't come to make you give up. That is, challenges come to make you stronger. Like when you come out from a family that is broke, you vow never to be broke. Hallelujah. When you come back from a family, like I've said before, that the marriage is not working, you will vow that my marriage will work. Come on, Hallelujah. There are challenges of things that have become impossible in life. There are things that God has made impossible. There are things that men have made impossible. And there are things that the devil is trying to make impossible. Exactly. God has made impossible. Like a man can never conceive and give birth to a child. That is impossible. Hallelujah. A woman can never conceive on her own. It is imp- there are things that God himself has made impossible. And then there are some things that are impossible by men. Example, even if you are a doctor, and then you can operate, you can never be admitted in FMC. Like, they will never give you a license to practice medicine. So long you have not gone to a medical school. Like, it is impossible to practice medicine if you don't have a medical certificate. Now, that one is not God. Even if you have the gift, you cannot do it because men have made it impossible. And the devil has made it impossible for you to rise without opposition. 
You can never rise without the devil opposing you. Hallelujah. So recognize that all limitations and impossibilities are not real. When you face them, you either go through them or you imagine they don't exist. Number three, never focus on mockers. Champions know that you don't focus on mockers. But you listen to constructive criticism. People that scorn you today will celebrate you tomorrow. People who think they are laughing at you. One day they will celebrate you. When you focus on people that laugh at you always. I remember those days when I were in campus. I didn't have a first class. So the people that had first class, they were reading in some way. First semester, 100 level. These guys would be sleep. I remember I had a roommate. His name is Victor. 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 Yes, he was the overall first class in engineering. The whole overall. He was my roommate. <laughs> so he was always reading. I told me in the bed you'd be reading, reading. I said you want to kill yourself. Some people be laughing at them. You want to kill yourself? If you die, who will enjoy the first class? First semester, we were laughing at those people, laughing at them, laughing at them until the result came out. 4.90 5.0 The same people that were mocking them first semester they were them for tutorial in second semester. Why do you have listened to the mockery in first semester and joined the Naus? Like you know Naus does it, national system on serious student. Why did they have joined them? They will be having a bad result like them. People mocking you today, don't focus on them. One day they will celebrate you. Pastor Chris, one of his lecturers called him one day. Said, Are you stupid? Can't you forget about this? Me? Can't you see that church is not going to work? There's no money in church. He said that one of the days the pastor, the, the professor came and met him in Lagos and was begging him. He said that if we have the grace to see the future of people, I wouldn't have said what I have said. Please forgive me. There are many people that said to Dr. Paul and to Bishop Oedebo, can't you see that there's no money in church? Church is an insult. If you listen to them, you will give up like them because they are not saying, but what you are saying, continue. One day they will say, they will come and celebrate with you if you don't listen to them. Come on, I will get that. As they are mocking you over your relationship, over your business, over ministry, over doing what God has said, don't give up. One day they will understand what the results show. Let the result explain to mockers. Come on, are we together? You are having a handwork or you are doing something and anybody at you. Don't listen to them. They are telling you Yahoo Yahoo is the in thing. Allow them to continue. Very soon they will wish they are listening to you. So never listen to your mockers. Never listen to them. Never. Block your ears. Because if you listen to people that mock you, I was listening to an interview by Elon Musk. Elon Musk right? We know Elon Musk. Alright. He flew his first space shift. And then in la- it landed in the river and bombed. Like, it could not even reach the air. It was going, uh, I watched the video. It came down, crashed. He flew the second one. That is, I'm talking about millions of dollars. The second one went and came back, but on its landing, it crashed and bombed. And then the third one, I watched them in the first one. They said, are you giving up? He said, I'm never giving up. Second one, why don't you give up BBC? This is not working. He said, he's never giving up. And then I watched the third one as they flew it. Went to space, came back, landed on the ground. It was a global celebration. And he became a multi-billionaire in one day. What if you have listened to people mocking him? In fact, Bill Gates was, I watched a video of Bill Gates warning the world against him. Yeah. Why? Because he's a business rival. So don't give up and listen to people mocking at you. Hallelujah. Never listen. Never be intimidated to reduce yourself into low self esteem because of your situation. Because in your little beginning, celebrate others and honor them. You know, a sign that you have low esteem is you don't appreciate people around you that are better than you. What I mean by that is if there is somebody among us here, of course, there are people here that have money more than me. A sign that I don't have low self-esteem is I celebrate their success. Low esteem is trying to bring everybody to your level. 
that you you don't see the success in others that you don't have and then you water down their success you have one millionaire in your account and say it's not by one millionaire it's by anointing you don't try to water down people's success or somebody's having a relationship you say oh boy it's not about who's a relationship it's who marry come on are we together that's low self-esteem in your days of little beginning don't be pushed to low self-esteem celebrate people that have results before you are we together all of us will not strike it in life at the same time celebrate them honor them when you come to a place expect them to be treated better than you come on are we together are you following me when you walk with somebody and is better than you and then there are two seats one is better than the other let the person sit in the better one because he deserves it celebrate people around you in your days of little beginning that are, don't be pushed to a lot of because you don't have money and then you begin to feel bad no be comfortable because very soon you too somebody will celebrate you don't allow low self-esteem to get into you in your days of little beginning if your parents don't have money celebrate children that their parents have money don't say that ah, the corolla you're traveling is your father own is it the, is it the person that made your father not to have corolla no it's not the person's father come on are we together celebrate their father's success it's a blessing in your mind you wish they were your parents come on are we together don't have low self-esteem is when you water down uh, everything the person has is not even the one it's his parent that did the connection for him no celebrate what they have low self-esteem is when you want in your days of little beginning i discovered those days there is a tendency to have low self-esteem when everybody around you is rising and they are being celebrated and then you are not rising there is a tendency to feel bad and then you begin to water down the successes of others never look down on something that somebody has done and is successful when somebody sings better than you don't say okay it's because the drama today was good it's not the drama celebrate the singing come on now we together when somebody can do anything better they celebrate them you too you will rise in your days of little beginning you're not being celebrated don't be angry you will rise come on are we together are you following me so never be intimidated to reduce yourself to a position of low self-esteem anywhere you are around and there is somebody obviously better than you celebrate them you see there is somebody more handsome than you don't be afraid to to, to you see there is a lady that's more fine than you when you see her say oh boy this girl is fine don't say ah but her leg is not straight just that she's fair no don't do that but that she's fine but she's sleeping with men don't uh, we are talking about her beauty appreciate what is good in people they will love this character when you, you have low esteem you will not see good in people you will try to bring you you water you down to your level hallelujah come on hallelujah yeah there are people in this church that are millionaires before me like real many before me and i tell them oh, one day my own is coming there are people that have the ability to buy cars they say say no that no you know buy a car till i post to buy a car I say charlie if you have the money buy a car oh, buy a car because i have the money I won't, buy, I won't wait for you now i celebrate their success come on i will together you don't have to water down everybody's success down to your level no if somebody has god has lifted somebody celebrate their success in your days your own will come hallelujah your own will come be aware that the, that is the god factor in your life in your lifting if god does not lift you you will never rise <clears throat> you can do everything you know how to do if god does not lift you you will never rise in my small experience in life when i was serving in this town i did something i went to all the churches in lokoja all especially the big churches all of them there is no one big church in local that i've not entered the biggest equal churches i've entered there the biggest catholic churches the biggest christ apostolic churches the biggest the apostolic church the biggest redeemed the biggest dunamis the biggest living faith which are the, this church across here um millennium christian center revival house um what's the name of this church this big church here 
Yes, and then Christ embassy that time they were at uh, GT Bank Junction, the big place that that was where they were. Which that big church against the local church. All of them have been there. And there's the one thing I've discovered: the word of God is there. Man, when I see enter some churches, I then after hearing the preaching, I will say, "Why are the chairs empty?" I'm telling you. I will hear the preaching. I will be vibrating like accurate. What I am. In my, in my, some of those Sunday services I've been prophesied to in two such churches. When I entered, the man said, There is somebody here, you were driving across the road, and the Holy Spirit said, Come, come here tomorrow. The Lord has something. And I, yes, and it was true. On Saturday, I was driving through the sign, but that big church close to FCMB. What's the name of that church? Close to FCMB. Close to FCMB after Senate Bank. In between, like this, there's a big church there. Uh, knowledge of the truth, yes. Joseph Omada, right? Yeah, he was the one. He said, and then the, I was driving on Saturday, and then the Holy Spirit said, go to me, right at the time, we'll come to this church tomorrow. That I was not planning to come there this Sunday. So when I came and he said that, I said, wow. So I came out. In fact, nobody came out, so I, I came out. He said that, what are you doing? I see, he told, I'm telling you what he told me. He said, I see you in nations, in flag of nations. I see you in different flags of nations. Have you ever gone abroad? I said, no, I've not gone abroad yet. But the Lord is taking you abroad. I see you talking and people are lifting. I see the grace of God. He said, are you a preacher? I said, no, but I have a call and I'm intending to go into ministry. He said, now, the Lord, like that. The old man was as Galatia Church. I entered here. The old man came to me and stood in my front. I was with my toast man. She said that the microphone, never leave the microphone. The microphone is in your hand. Never leave it. Now, with accurate, like, accurate prophetic graces like that. Now, all of them are big churches. All of them, for having multiple services that time, since that time, till now, I believe all of them are still big. But I believe with this kind of result, I'm expecting to see a wonderful, fandama, glorious, spectacular, city jamming attendance. But people don't listen. I'm telling you. That's why influence is God. When God said, let the world listen, they will listen to you. I've discovered that you can preach anything. If God did not tell people to listen, they will not. They'll be hearing God bless you as your father. Like you, the pastor said, God bless you. But what the people be hearing is insult. Why is he talking to us? Are we children? But the pastor said, God bless you. We might the person that God said, be hard. Even if he shout, ah, glory, 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 up and down, up and down. The people will listen, hallelujah. Pastor, please, can you come to the front? Can you bring it to the front? People will say, no, no, sir. Please, come to the front, please. That's why I insist that we have a chair so that. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, know that God factor is involved. Like many of us, the hand of God is upon us. And we are being lifted. And you are being heard. And your voice will be heard. You can do everything. If God did not say rise, you will not rise. You will not. It will be plus one, minus two. Plus one, minus one. Maintain your courage and resolution about life and your vision. Nobody can stop a man or a woman that is determined. Only God can stop them. But we say, when they began to build the Tower of Babel, they discovered that God said, what they have planned to do, they will do it. If you have made up your mind to succeed in life, hallelujah, maintain courage and firm resolution. Yesterday, I was watching a video about a new apartment somewhere, and then I said, God, I have been there for a higher level in this life. There is a higher level of life that we all of us must want. Hallelujah. Higher level of life. You will not be fishing water every day to bath till you die. That is a life that is higher than that. Are you understanding me at all? <laughs> you will not be owning fun every day till you die. Make up your mind and be resoluted. That life must get better. You must not be avoiding church when it's time for launching or something like that. You will not be afraid of family meetings. Make up your mind that you will succeed in this life. You see, as a mentor, I have made a decision, a certain decision a long time ago. That if I mentor somebody, I will teach the person what to do. 
and then if the person does not do it i will motivate the person to do it motivate the person to do it if the person is not motivated i will push the person to do it if the person does not work i'll push the person out of my life yeah i will teach you motivate you the pushing you are here is that you succeed or you fail one of the two either you succeed and you remain or you fail and you move so that somebody can be another student can come in i will teach you motivate you you are not still motivated push you if it doesn't work i'll push out of my life yeah hallelujah but that's my decision because as a mentor, you don't, many people don't understand what the word mentor. If you have a mentor, or you, let's say if you have a mentee, people don't understand the responsibility that is on it. Like you have to pray for them, you have to fast on them, you have to decide. You know, I was with someone yesterday with first lady talking about marriage and something like that, and then I was I was afraid right, because this was a mentor, as is a mentee looking up to you and say, "Should I marry this one or not?" If you say yes and it did not work. For the rest of the person's life, you are responsible for misery. So you must hear God, the pressure to pray and to hear God. Because it's responsibility. It's not about my, my, my daddy, my son, my mentee. No. I told myself one time that I will intentionally reduce the number of people on me because it will reduce the burdens on your head. Because some people say, Lord, they will look at you, but you told me, you said, God said. And I looked up to you. Somebody told me something that I did not sleep that night. He said, I don't have a father. You are not my father. Anything you told me, I will do. Anything you asked me to do, now I will do it. I was scared. I told first lady, this statement scared me. I was afraid. That would make you to double up. You must hear God. I said, God, say it again. But God, what? Because you have to be sure. It's responsibility. All of us that have mentees, I know you understand what that, unless you are not a serious, responsible mentor, it's responsible to pray, to study, to prepare, to help them, give them substantial things. Hallelujah. So be resolute that, that is why I've made up my mind that I will succeed and then people around me must succeed. The reason why I want them to succeed is because their success reduces pressure on me. Come on, I will tell you that. If everybody around me is a millionaire, they will not ask me, my money becomes my money. But when they are not successful, my money is not my money. It's our money. But when you are rich, you are rich. Pastor Eben is rich. All of them are rich. Church money becomes church money. You know, you have pastor organizing how to steal money. But when they have money, how much, how much there? How much, how much total offering that came up in, in a month? How much is it? That's the total offering. Okay. Bye-bye. Because they are blessed. Come on, we together. I am made of the, we, we, we must succeed. It's either you are, you are, I'm teaching now. You are being motivated. Some of us are already pushed. Okay. It's remain for you to succeed or what? <laughs> succeed. None of you will be pushed out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Always stay a brace of victory. I have seen my future. Practice that you have to do to keep your hope alive. Learn to guard your tongue. Led to God. Watch who you tell your plans. In Acts 14, verse 15, the Bible says they communicated to people of like mind. Learn to have positive confessions. Learn to say less. Hallelujah. Learn to say less. Guard your song. Discuss less about your relationship with others. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about fiance, fiancée. Discuss less. There are things your friend that is not in that relationship that I think people should not know. Learn to tell people less of your purpose and your plan. Or when you are before your mentor or your mentor or somebody you know that this one is safe, then begin to talk. Or when you are around like man and people that may not understand you, talk less. Imagine if I meet some people I say that the Lord has told me that in local job we will have, we will fill this stadium and have a program. The person will laugh and say, it cannot happen. The government will not even approve it. Have you ever seen the, the, the person will say, a prophet is not honored in his town. Have you ever seen a man of God in this city hold a program? There are people you don't share your things with. Guard your tongue. Because they have a way of discouraging you. 
Come on, are we together? Keep quiet. It will help you sustain your hope. Don't tell them. Get information. Don't be, nya, 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 but this is my friend. I trust you. That friend is also trusting somebody. You told the person, this day I'm telling you, she told me, but I'm trusting you. That person to have somebody is trusting. And especially, they say, if you want to water down everything, tell somebody that has a low mind. Tell somebody, you see yourself flying, flying abroad, or you see yourself like that. Oh, no, it cannot happen like that. Life is not like that, though. In Nigeria, economy it doesn't work. So learn to say less. Learn to guard your mouth. Learn who you tell your visions to. Many people that are not in your shoe will discourage you. Come on, are we together? Are we together? Number two, be an encourager of others. Bible says, iron sharpened iron. Proverbs 27, verse 17. What you give, you receive. Good measure, pressed down, shaking over, and running over. Hallelujah. When you encourage others, you will be encouraged. When you honor others, you will be honored. When you give, you will receive. Come on, now we together. When you see somebody struggling, encourage them. Encourage them. Hallelujah. Encourage them. Encourage them. Tap people on their back and say you did well. Because most time when people finish ministering, especially if they have not built their mind to an extent that no matter what, it doesn't matter. They need somebody to tell them you have tried. I think it's time. Is it true? You need somebody like, like somebody finishing here and then somebody parking behind just tap the person like you have done well. You know what I'm talking about at all? Like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> like, like you, have, you have done well. So just to encourage you. A lot of things happen in Shekinah encounter. Hallelujah. They encourage us like you have done well. First lady will preach a message that will make me to be stunned listening. After she comes down, she will say, ah, I was feeling as if I was saying rubbish. Why did I say? I say, hey, this is your preaching that I was listening as if I've never listened to preach like that. I was blessed. All she needed to hear was, wow, you did well. You did Father my glorious. You, you, you did well. Encourage others. She will outgrow it very soon. Very soon, whether I say she's blessed or not, she should tell, uh, like it doesn't, yeah. But in little beginning, some people need the encouragement. Once upon a time, me too, I needed it. Once upon a time, I needed to hear feedback after the preaching. Ah, today was fireful. Today was this. Today was this. But now, I'm not, <laughs> I did not say I don't need encouragement. I need encouragement. But whether I got, whether I get it or not, it doesn't affect me before. But only before I feel affected. But now, whether I get it, if I get it, thank you very much for your compliment. But if I don't get it, oh, we move. We move. And we are, people in their leaders' days need encouragement. When you open the shop and nobody comes to buy, tell them, come tomorrow, come tomorrow. Encourage people. Are we together? Encourage them. There are sometimes, there are people, especially people that start channels or something that start, some of them, I go and listen and then I will call them. I say, I listen to this. Or some people that are preaching message and recently are uploading it online. I will go and say, please, where can I get your message? Listen to it and tell the person a recap of the message. I said, wow, you see, you said this, you said this. I person, you listen. I said, yeah, I listen. That is also to encourage the person. Because nobody did it to me when it was my time. And I know how painful it is. Hallelujah. Yeah. So now I'll call people in the midnight and say, right now I'm listening to your message. You are just saying this. Just to feel the person encouraged. Hallelujah. So I say, ah, please, I need to listen. Just encourage people. Hallelujah. In your days of little beginning, maintain intimacy with God. Don't allow pursuit of your vision replace. In your days of little beginning, don't allow things to replace your intimacy with God. Learn the art of trusting God for direction and instructions. Instructions and directions are key for wisdom. Direction avoid help you avoid costly mistakes in your life. There are mistakes that are costly. But when God directs you, you will avoid them. Hallelujah. Every instruction determines your next level. The instruction you receive determines your next level. Hallelujah. One thing from God, when you do it, your level has changed. So always trust God for direction in your days of little beginning. Spend time. Do retreat. Lord, how can I do now? What should I do now? What should I do? How can I go? Hallelujah. How can I make this business to grow? 
How can I make my church to grow? How can I make this to work? Trust God for direction and instruction. Hallelujah. And then God will always speak to you in your days of little beginning. I believe that the Lord will help you get the messages and listen to them. Hallelujah. Should we remind ourselves about the messages that we preach this month? Alright. The glory of little beginning. Mounting up in destiny. Maintaining focus on vision and purpose. Excellence. Handling foundational issues. Trust in the Lord. Living in God's will. Temporal terrain. Path in life. Don't give up. Handling challenges. Handling trials and pressures. Help from above for life and destiny. Competence and preparedness. Enforcing change in levels. Get them on listening. Handling depression. Surviving mockery. Plan B. The power of determination. Hallelujah. After preaching plan B on Wednesday, I, I just felt very, very happy. That message, is, I just felt very happy about that message. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord will help us. And we will scale through in Jesus' name. And let's be on our feet. And say, Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Thank you for your faithfulness. The compass you need has just been delivered into your hands. You can get all the anointed messages on our Telegram channel at Shekinah Encounter Center Sermons. For more inquiries, you can also call 080-6522-6276 or 080-261-2114. Remain rapturable, 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 rapturable.